Have you ever wondered how solar cells are made? Well, today we're going to explore that. Solar energy, a gift from the sun, is a clean, abundant, and renewable source of power that we can harness for our use. At the heart of this energy conversion process are solar cells. These remarkable devices, also known as photovoltaic cells, have the ability to convert sunlight directly into electricity. They do this by utilizing the principles of the photovoltaic effect, where light striking certain materials can generate an electric current. The key ingredient in most solar cells is silicon, a semi-metallic element that is second only to oxygen in terms of its abundance on Earth. Silicon's semiconducting properties make it ideal for solar cells, so how do we transform this common element into a powerful energy converter? Stay with us as we delve into the fascinating process of how solar cells are made. The journey of a solar cell begins with the procurement and purification of silicon. Silicon, a semiconducting material, is predominantly derived from quartz sand. It's an ideal choice for solar cells, thanks to its unique properties and its wide availability. Let's delve into the first phase of this journey, the extraction of silicon. Picture a pile of quartz sand. This sand is purified in an arc furnace, a powerful tool that can reach scorching temperatures. The sand is melted together with carbon and this intense heat helps to extract what we call metallurgical grade silicon. Now, if you're wondering what metallurgical grade means, it's essentially a fancy way of saying that the silicon is quite pure, but not pure enough for our needs. We're aiming for solar grade silicon, which requires an even higher level of purity. So how do we achieve this? We use a process called the Siemens process. The metallurgical grade silicon is reacted with hydrogen chloride and this reaction forms a compound called trichlorosilane. This compound is then distilled and decomposed at high temperatures. The result is high purity polysilicon, which is just what we need to start crafting solar cells. This might sound quite complex, and indeed it is a sophisticated process, but remember, at its heart, it's a story of transformation. We're taking something as common as sand and through a series of chemical reactions and high temperature processes, we're transforming it into a material that can capture the energy of the sun. This process is a testament to human ingenuity. It's a perfect blend of chemistry, engineering, and a determination to harness renewable energy. Each step, from the arc furnace to the Siemens process, is carefully calibrated to ensure the highest possible purity of silicon. This is crucial because the purer the silicon, the more efficient the solar cell will be. And why is efficiency so important? Well, when it comes to solar cells, efficiency is the name of the game. The more efficient a cell is, the more sunlight it can convert into electricity. This means more power for your home, your devices, or even your electric car. So by starting with high purity silicon, we're setting the stage for a highly efficient solar cell. And there you have it. The story of silicon, from humble sand to high purity polysilicon. It's a process that requires precision and expertise, but it's well worth the effort. With this high-purity polysilicon, we're one step closer to harnessing the power of the sun. Now that we have our high-purity polysilicon, we're ready to move on to the next step. Onward to a future powered by the sun, a future of renewable, sustainable energy. And it all starts with a handful of sand. With our purified silicon, we can now create the basic building blocks of our solar cells, the ingots and wafers. This journey starts by taking our high-purity polysilicon and melting it down. But we're not just making a silicon soup here. We're aiming for a single large crystal of silicon known as an ingot. To achieve this, we use a method called the Chokralski process. Picture a crucible filled with molten silicon. Into this fiery bath, a single crystal seed of silicon is carefully dipped. The seed acts as a template, encouraging the molten silicon to arrange itself into a matching crystalline structure. As the seed is slowly withdrawn, it pulls with it a growing cylindrical crystal of silicon. This is our ingot. The process is a delicate dance. The seed must be withdrawn at just the right speed. Too fast and the crystal structure won't have time to form properly. Too slow and the ingot could become too large to handle. It's a balancing act that requires precision and patience. Once the ingot is fully formed, it's allowed to cool. What we're left with is a large cylindrical crystal of silicon, but we're not done yet. This ingot is still too thick to be used in a solar cell. 
The next step is to slice it into thin wafers. To do this, the ingot is secured and a wire saw is used to cut it. This isn't your everyday saw though. It uses a slurry of silicon carbide or diamond to gradually wear away the silicon, creating thin slices or wafers. This process is precise, ensuring each wafer is just a few hundred micrometers thick. But even after all this, the wafer is not yet ready for prime time. Each slice is polished to create a smooth surface. This is crucial because any irregularities or roughness could interfere with the wafer's ability to absorb and convert sunlight. So we've taken sand, extracted silicon, purified it, melted it into an ingot and sliced it into wafers. Each wafer is a thin slice of crystalline silicon, ready to be transformed into a solar cell. This is a testament to our ability to manipulate materials at a microscopic level, turning common sand into a high-tech device that can harness the power of the sun. With our wafers ready, we can now begin the process of turning them into solar cells. Now comes the exciting part, transforming our wafers into solar cells. Imagine our wafer as a blank canvas ready to be transformed into an energy-harnessing powerhouse. This metamorphosis happens in several stages, each bringing us closer to the creation of a fully functional solar cell. First, we begin with the doping process. A little like adding spices to a dish, we introduce impurities to the wafer to alter its properties. Most commonly, we use phosphorus, and this is done at high temperatures. By doing this, we create a PN junction within the wafer. This junction is the heart of our solar cell, the place where the magic happens. It establishes an electric field, which is critical for converting sunlight into electricity. Now, you might be thinking, why add impurities? Isn't purity usually a good thing? Well, in the world of semiconductors, it's these impurities that give the material its unique ability to control the flow of electricity. In essence, we're creating a one-way street for electrons, allowing them to move in a way that generates an electric current. With the PN junction in place, our wafer is now a photovoltaic device, but we're not finished yet. Our next step is to apply an anti-reflective coating. This coating, usually made of silicon nitride, is like putting sunglasses on our solar cell. It reduces the amount of sunlight that bounces off the cell's surface, ensuring we capture as much light as possible. After all, every photon of light we can absorb is another we can convert into electricity. We want our solar cell to be a sun sponge, soaking up every bit of sunlight it can. Finally, we move to the last stage of cell production, electrode formation. We add metal contacts to the front and back of the wafer. Consider these contacts as the gatekeepers of our solar cell. They allow the electrons, freed by the energy of the sun, to be collected and form an electric current. The front contact is carefully designed to be as thin and spread out as possible, like a fine mesh, allowing light to reach the cell while providing a path for the electrons to move. The back contact, on the other hand, is a solid sheet of metal, providing a robust pathway for the flow of electricity. And there you have it. With these steps, we've created a solar cell that can convert sunlight into electricity. From a humble wafer of silicon, we've crafted a device that captures and transforms the sun's energy, a tiny piece of technology that's powering our journey towards a more sustainable future. And while each cell might be small, Remember, it's the collective power of many cells working together that make up the solar panels you see on rooftops and in solar farms. Each cell is a crucial part of a bigger picture, a small but mighty contributor to our renewable energy revolution. Now comes the exciting part, transforming our wafers into solar cells. That's what we said at the beginning and now you've seen just how exciting it can be. From doping, to adding an anti-reflective coating, to forming the electrodes, each step is a testament to the marvel of engineering and the power of human ingenuity. With these steps, we've created a solar cell that can convert sunlight into electricity. But a single solar cell isn't very powerful on its own. That's why we assemble them into solar panels. Now let's explore the fascinating journey of transforming these individual solar cells into a fully functional solar panel. The process involves three key steps, cell layout and stringing, lamination and testing and framing. Firstly, the individual cells are meticulously laid out in a specific arrangement. This pattern is not random, but rather a calculated design to maximize the voltage output of the panel. Once the cells are in place, 
They're connected in series to form a string, a bit like a chain. This stringing process is essential as it facilitates the integration of cells into a panel, ensuring the energy flows smoothly from cell to cell, but these strings of cells are delicate and need protection. This is where lamination comes into play. The cell strings are sandwiched between layers of a special material known as EVA, short for ethylene vinyl acetate. This isn't your everyday sandwich though. The EVA layers serve a crucial protective function, guarding the cells against the elements. But we don't stop there. A protective glass layer is added on top for good measure, adding another layer of defense against the harsh realities of the outdoors. Now, this assembly is ready for lamination. The lamination process effectively seals the cells, creating a secure and weatherproof unit. It's like wrapping a present that's ready to be delivered, but in this case, the gift is clean, renewable energy. With the lamination complete, we're one step closer to having a fully assembled solar panel. But before we get too excited, there's one more crucial step, testing and framing. Every solar panel is rigorously tested for efficiency and durability. It's a bit like the panel's final exam, um, where it has to prove that it's ready to go out into the world and do its job. Once the panel passes the test, it's time for the framing. Frames are added to provide structural support, ensuring the panel can withstand the test of time. To finish up, junction boxes are attached. These handy little components allow for electrical connections, making it possible for the panel to feed the energy it generates into an electrical system. And just like that, we have a fully assembled solar panel ready to harness the sun's energy. This might seem like a complex process, but it's a testament to the incredible strides we've made in the field of renewable energy. Each step is a crucial piece of the puzzle in our quest to harness the power of the sun, helping us march towards a more sustainable future, one solar panel at a time. So there you have it, the intricate process of creating a solar cell from start to finish. Let's take a moment to appreciate the complexity and the ingenuity involved in this process. We begin with a raw material as simple as quartz sand. This sand is purified and transformed into silicon, the essential ingredient in solar cells, through a series of high temperature processes. The metallurgical grade silicon is further refined into high purity polysilicon, a vital step in ensuring the efficiency of the final product. But the journey doesn't stop there. The polysilicon is then melted and recrystallized into ingots using the ingenious Chokralski process, named after the scientist who developed it. These ingots are then precisely sliced into thin wafers, the base upon which our solar cells are built. The wafers undergo a series of sophisticated procedures from doping, which introduces impurities to create the all-important PN junction, to the application of an anti-reflective coating that maximizes light absorption. The final touch in the cell production stage is the addition of metal contacts, which collect the electrons freed by solar energy, converting it into an electric current. Once the cells are complete, they are assembled into solar panels. The cells are laid out, connected and sealed between layers of protective material. These panels are then tested for efficiency and durability, ensuring that they are ready to harness the power of the sun. Every step in this process requires precision, scientific knowledge, and technological innovation. As we continue to refine these methods, we enhance the efficiency of solar cells and reduce their production cost, making solar energy an increasingly viable and sustainable solution for our energy needs. In this journey from sand to solar cell, we see a remarkable testament to human ingenuity and our relentless pursuit of sustainable energy solutions. As we continue to strive for a more sustainable future, understanding these processes helps us appreciate the remarkable technology behind solar energy.